Okay, so I'm going to give you a quick demo of how Ready Builds works. We're going to do two things. The first, we're going to consume an existing API, just so you can see how easy that is, and then we're going to build our own API. It should take four to five minutes, give or take, to uh, consume an API and then create our own. So, we're going to start with an existing API. It's called Person, and it lets you do two things currently. It lets you look up the name and a company for an email address. So I'll click in the name, and we'll go to copy and paste this, and oh no, it says I need an API key. Okay, we can fix that. We'll just log in. And we have an API key now. So I'm going to copy this again. And now see up here it says we need to do npm install api dash dash save. So we'll do that first. npm install save. This will take a second. But while it's installing, we can open a new file. This is just a node file with um, APIs and different languages. Now note that we configure our API here uh, with an API key, but there's no URLs or anything. It's kind of like a really nice SDK that um, is very standardized. There's no URL encoding, there's no there's nothing special. It's just you pass in data, the email address. We're gonna change, oops. We're gonna change that to, I'll do my email address. And then we get the response in the error. So I'm gonna save this. And then all I have to do is run node test.js it's going to hit the server and say my name. So there we go. Um, we can open up test again. Uh, we can change name to company and run it again. And we see that um, it's got my company name. Now one last thing we're going to do is we'll run it one more time. But this time we're going to get rid of the email. Uh, the email is required. So we'll see what happens when this happens. Run one last time. And okay, so we got an error. We must provide the user's email address. Great. So let's go back here. So if we refresh, we'll see that we have our logs here. So this is the logs just for name. Um, we can see, you know, my email, we can see uh, the name. Um, if we want the logs on the left side, we can see the failed one uh, that didn't work out for us. Uh, we can see the successes as well. So let's say I think that this should not have broken. I can create an issue and I can actually like create an issue right on the log so that the creator of the API could see um, see my logs as well, which is nice. Okay, so that's pretty much all we have. Um, versioning is interesting because versioning is immutable, which means that once I start using version, I'm on version 0.0.2 of this, once I use version 0.0.2, .0 if the creator launches 0.3, then um, I'm still on 0.2, which is nice because it means that any code that I've written um, parameters I, I know about, things like that, will never change. Um, that's pretty much it as far as consuming. We try to make it as dead simple as humanly possible to consume an API. So now we're going to try creating. Here's how you create. So C has an empty directory. We're going to type API in it, and we're going to call it um, demo1234, uh, version numbers that. And our first endpoint, which is just like an API endpoint, will be hello world. OK, so we're good to go. So now we can open endpoints dot hello world, and um, this will come back to. We're gonna let's make a quick API that will let us multiply two numbers. You can use a database or anything like that, but just to keep it simple, we'll do this. Will multiply two numbers. The first thing will be a um, number. Well, this is the default number, so x equal to five. First number. The second one will be y, we'll make it 10, second number. And the it'll return the multiplied number. So all the docs are going to be generated from uh, this code snippet right here. So now down here we can do if no x or no data.y. So we're just going to return an error if you don't pass in the x to the y. And then the success can just be um, data.x times data.y. Dot, data so we'll try that. We can um, rename it um, to, from hello world to something like multiply. Oops. I misspelled that. And um, now we, we can run it locally. So we can do API local multiply x equal to 5, y is equal to 50. 
You should get 250 back. Okay, so it works. So now to make it live so everyone can use it, we just type API deploy. Nope. API deploy. Have to log in again. Okay, type API deploy. It's gonna be a public service. Uh, it's gonna be deployed to my own team. And it's live. So now I can know this URL, I can share this URL with anyone. Um, but we have a really nice API where uh, you know you can see the endpoints, you can see code snippets, you see examples. Um, so I can just copy this or copy the command line version. Um, I can just copy this, go back here. Run it, and there we go. And so that's pretty much what we build. Um, it's a really simple way to consume APIs and an even easier, simple way to build them.